Praise the Lord, and welcome to this evening broadcast of the Value of the Family by Bishop Felicia Odoch from Deliverance Church, Kawash, Kisumu City, along Kondele, Kibos Road, behind Gudika Estate. We meet here as a church for Sunday services. Every Sunday we are here at 7.30, then 10.30. By 10, the service is over. You're going home. Second service begins at 10.30. You're always welcome. And then we also meet here for midweek service. Monday evening, we meet here for prayer. Tuesday and Sundays, we have home, home meetings. You can always join a small group and benefit. We also do our meetings here on Wednesday for a powerful midweek service. And your life will never be the same again. And because we love the family, we also have family department where we meet as couples and pack to one another and share and love one another. You will be excited to, 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 to be part of the Living Stream family and Deliverance Church Car Wash. Otherwise, this evening is a joy to welcome you to this popular program of yours, The Value of the Family. We bring you teachings and discussions that enrich your family, enrich your marriage relationship, enrich your home and your life will never be the same again. Last time we were sharing on the, uh, the blessings of the man who fears the Lord. And we were able to read Psalms 112. We also read Psalms 128. And once again this evening, I want to still dwell on the family because those, those verses are talking of a good family. And so this evening or time again in Psalms 128, we want to look at some of these qualities as some of these qualities, we may read other scriptures, some of these qualities so that will, will make a healthy home, will make a healthy home. Uh, so in Psalms 128, the scripture says, Blessed is every man who fears the Lord, who walks in his ways. Uh, when you sit, uh, when you eat the labor of your hands, you shall be happy and it shall be well with you. Your wife shall be like a a fruitful vine in the heart, very heart of your home. Your children uh, like olive plants all around your table. Behold, thou shall the man be blessed who fears the Lord. The Lord bless you out of Zion, and may you see the goodness of Jerusalem all the days of your life. You, yes, may you see your children's children. Uh, I want this evening, once again, to explore with you some of these things that will make this home be good. Uh, when you're married, you belong to a family. One of the good qualities here, as we learned last time, is the fear of the Lord. And the fear of the Lord will lead you to be a good parent. So if you're going to have a good home, you're going to have a healthy marriage uh, family, you have to agree and make up your mind to be a good parent to your children and to your family. Make up your mind to honor the Lord in your family uh, and, and make a good home. Uh, so the Bible tells us in Ephesians chapter uh, 6, verse 1 to 4, Ephesians 6, 1 to 4, the scripture is speaking to us and says, Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment, with a promise that it may go well with you and that you may have a long life in the land. Uh, and fathers, don't stir up anger in your children, but bring them up in the training and instruction of the Lord. That is Ephesians chapter 6, verse number 1 to 4. And when you look at this, it resonates with what we are reading in Psalms 127 and Psalms 128. Because the focus in this psalm, this, these two psalms, is the family. The focus in these two farms is parenting. The focus in these two psalms is walking with the Lord. The focus in these two farms are the blessings that come as a result of walking godly fear. And so when you look at the instructions Paul is giving here, he says obey. Obey means to follow the commands or guidance of the Lord. And he says honor. Honor is to reverence, reverence the Lord. Uh, so he talks of these things in the family context. 
And uh, it is important to realize that to be a great parent uh, and to have great kids, you can only be good as a parent when you hold to the word of the Lord. You can only be good as a parent and a good parent when you learn the instructions from the word of the Lord on parenting. The word of the Lord has very powerful instructions on parenting, which is very important for you and very healthy for your family and your home. And it, is, it will always be a joy for you to know these things. Uh, for example, Paul writing to his son Timothy in 1 Timothy 3, 1 Timothy 3, 4. Uh, Paul writes to Timothy, and uh, we read the following words, 1 Timothy 3, 4. What does he tell him? His son Timothy, as a church leader, Paul speaks to him some powerful truth, and he tells him in 3, 4, he says, one who rules his house well, having his children in submission with all reverence. Yeah? To be a good parent is to be one who rules Verse number four, First Corinthians, Timothy three four, one who rules his own house well, having his children in submission with all reverence. You teach obedience in the home, you teach order in the home, you teach godly fear in the home. This is uh, the good parent that will bring glory and honor to God in our home. The Lord wants you to be a good parent, my friend. The Lord wants your home to be a good home. You know God, where throughout creation, whatever he did, he passed through the home. He made the first home of Adam and Eve, put them in the Garden of Eden. He came to a family of King Abraham and picked Abraham out. He came to the family of King Moses, picked Moses out. He came to the family of Jacob, picked Joseph out. And whatever God has done, he has always done in the family context. You see even the Lord Jesus Christ being brought in a family context. Therefore, I'm here to remind you, be a good parent. Honor God in that home. Uh, obey the Lord. And teach your children to be orderly. Let there be respect in the family. Let there be discipline in the family. Let that home have some kind of order so that there is establishment of good leadership. So this is why Psalm says that when you sit to eat, in Psalms 128, where we are, it says when you sit, when you eat the labor of your hand, you shall be happy and it shall be well with you. You shall be happy and it shall be well with you because you have maintained order in this home. You maintain godly reverence in this home, submission, even in eating, people are organized. People wait for one another. Nobody is eating more than is enough for him, but we are mindful of one another. May your home be a good home because you are a good parent and you will be ever excited. To be a good parent, this leads me to the second point. When the psalmist talks of when you eat the labor of your hand, you'll be happy and it shall be well with you. It brings an aspect of management. And so, to have this home where the Lord is reverenced, to have this home where the fear of God is established, you must learn to manage well the home, my brother, my sister. Uh, the marketplace teaches us the marketplace. You've been to a marketplace. All of us have been to marketplace either to buy, to check on somebody, or to look for something. But it teaches us that success or failure in any business or venture depends on effective management. Any business venture, marriage and the family, leading a church, doing a business enterprise, it all depends on management. So effective management is not doing things uh, it's not just doing things right, it is doing the right things. It is not a question of doing things right, but doing the right things. Teaching children to obey, teaching the, the, the wife to respect the husband, teaching the, the husband to love the wife, and teaching order in the home. 
being faithful stewards, doing things the right way. And there's always a right way God has designed for things to be done. So this is also true of the families. So the, the, the scriptures inform us, informs us, my dear brothers and sisters, that it is our responsibility to manage well. That is what we have just seen in First Timothy 3, 4. One who manages his family well. This is the word of the Lord. And there is no shortcut, my dear friend. You must learn to manage your family well because you are managing it for God. God enjoys the family. We see God coming to fellowship with the family of Adam and Eve in the garden of the evening in the cool of the day. We see God coming to visit Abraham and his family in Genesis 18 and to have fellowship with them and to even share what the mission to go and destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. There is always the angel of the Lord sent to the home of Samson and Manoah. The angel of the Lord is sent to, 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 to the, the home of Zachary and Elizabeth. Uh, the, the, the prophet of the Lord is sent to Elisha. The prophet, a successful business person, is found plowing 12 sets of oxen. And so there is something about the family that is so good as far as God is concerned. And this is why we are in this program to teach you the value of marriage and the family. Honor your family. Honor your marriage. Uh, manage your family well. And the Lord will richly bless your life, my dear friend. Manage your family well and be a good manager in that home to the glory and the honor of God. And your life will never be the same again. Uh, the other thing that is important to realize in the family Take time for each other. Take time for each other. Ah, uh, like now schools are closed. Children are going to be at home for two months, two weeks. Friends, what are your plans for your children during this long holiday? Is it as usual, dad and mom leave in the morning, come in the evening for those of us with younger children? For those of us with adult children, are we in touch with them? Your sons and daughters could be working elsewhere. They could be in college. They could be in another country. But what are their plans? Take time for each other. Make a deliberate phone call to your son. Make a deliberate phone call to your daughter-in-law or your son-in-law. Call your, your daughter. Know how she's doing with her husband. Call her husband. Know how they are doing. Your son and your daughter have come home for holiday. They are home. Is there a plan for them? Oh, there's food there, they can eat, they can watch the TV, they can play if they want. You are, it's only to come and go. No, take time for each other. Take time to be with your wife. Take time to be with your husband. Take time to be with your children. Eat together where possible as a family. Yes, the Lord in his word in Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 4 to 9 has very powerful words to the children of Israel. He speaks very strong words. I've read this passage before in this program, and it is not a burden for me to read it to you again because I've confined myself to the family issues, and so some of these passages will always recur. So in Deuteronomy 6, Deuteronomy 6, 4 to 9, the scripture tells us very clearly, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. And these words which I command you uh, today shall be in your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children and shall talk of them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, and when you lie down, and when you rise up, you shall bind them up as a sign in your hand, and they shall be as frontless between your eyes, you shall write them in the doorposts of your house and your gates. Let them be exposed of the word of God in your home. Have some writings on the wall, on the door, at the gate, some scripture. Let those words hang on the walls. Let them hang on the doors. The Lord is talking that you should impress like a printing press imprinting the characters of letters or paper, impress love of God to your children 
He said, talk, conversation must take place, create time for each other, talk with one another, sit, yeah, sit together as a family, sit at the table to eat together, and while you're sitting at the table to eat, talk, and he said, walk, once in a while, you walk as a family, walk with your children, dad, walk with your son, mama, walk with your son, walk with your daughters, just go for a purposeful walk with them, and he says, when you lie down in the home, read the word of the Lord before you go to bed. Ah, you read the word of the Lord. Yes, we must create time for each other. Yeah, he says, tie them in your hands. Let the rubber band or the wristband on your, your hand have some scripture on it. This is the word of the Lord. So these teachings of God and instructing his love must be a full-time job for every parent. All things that you do in that home, let the word of God not be absent. Everything you're doing to make your family good, to make the family lovely, and everything working, let the word of God be part and parcel of that package. Friend, this is the real life you have with your wife and children. Parents, let me tell you, those of you with younger children, you only have them up to 20 years. After 20 years, they are out of the home. So create time for your sons and daughters. This holiday, make a deliberate plan for their children. Create time to be with them. Create time to build, be, be visit your parents with them. If your parents are still alive, your parents would want to see their grandchildren. Don't just send children at home alone. Go with them. Uh, sit there for one day. Leave them behind. Come back for them later. Let's, let's just create time for each other. Create time for your wife. Create time for your husband, friend. This is the value of the family. And this is your speaker reminding you Marriage is valuable. Marriage is working. Therefore, create time for each other. Create time for the children. Create time for one another. Hallelujah. And then it's not just being a good parent, not just creating time for each other, but also let us set a good example. Let us set a good example. He says when you sit down to eat in your house, you will be happy and it will be well with you. You will be happy and it will be well with you. Set an example. Yes, Titus. Paul writing to his son Titus, who was a leader of the church in Crete. He tells him in Titus chapter 2, Titus chapter 2 and verse number 7, let's just catch up with something here that Paul tells his son uh, uh, Titus. He tells him in Titus chapter 2 and verse number 7, he says, in all things, showing yourself to be a pattern of good works. In doctrine, showing integrity, reverence, incorruptibility. Yeah? So, sound uh, speech uh, that cannot be condemned, that one who is, uh, 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 may be ashamed. One who is uh, always arguing may be ashamed. So it talks of, in all things, showing yourself to be a pattern of good works. Dear brother, I remind you as a father to be a good example to your sons. I remind you to mama as a good, uh, be a good example to your daughters and to your children. Let us set good example in our homes of good pattern. Children being an example to one another in dressing, in speech, and in conduct, in handling one another, in handling property, let us attach value to life, attach value to property. Let us handle them well as stewards of God, and your life will be good, your marriage will be good. You'll be excited being a member of that family. Next thing that you see that when you sit at table, you will be happy and it will be well with you. A very loaded statement. Before it goes to talk about your wife and children, before it goes to talk about anything else, he says that when you sit at table, when you say you sit at table, and why does this happiness leads to, this what happiness leads to, verse number three, your wife shall be like a, a fruitful vine in the heart of your house. 
your children like olive plants all around your table. Yes, let love be a way of life in that home. Let love be a way of life in that home. Love one another. Demonstrate that truly you love one another in that home. Don't fake it. Be genuine about it. 1 Corinthians 14, verse number 1. The scripture says, 1 Corinthians 14 and verse number 1. Glory be to God, most high. I bless the name of the Lord for this word. I'm excited. Pursue love and desire, desire spiritual gifts, but especially that you may prophesy. Yes, let love be a way of life. No home can be healthy without love. Let love be a way of love, life in that home. Demonstrate that you love your wife. Demonstrate that you love your husband. Word and deed, word and deed, not by word only, not by deed only, word and deed. Hug where necessary. Hug your house. How hug your wife. Hug, hug your husband. Not only when you're making love, but just to demonstrate that you love each other. Hug your children. But dad, Baba, give your son a hug. Hold them in your lap. Hey, mama, give your daughter a hug or your son. Hold them in your, your hand. So let us demonstrate love in the home. God is a God of love. The Bible says God so loved that he gave. Let love be a way of life in that home. It is the force that holds everything together. When children know that their parents love each other and love them, they will always want to be home. Uh, when a spouse knows the wife loves him, he will always want to be home. When the husband, the wife knows the husband is there for her, she will always run to be home. Let us not have this kind of home which is just a sleeping point and a eating point. Let our homes be placed where we demonstrate love to each other. How I pray that we'll demonstrate love in our homes. How I pray that we'll demonstrate the love of God for one another, whatever our weaknesses. The Bible says love covers a multitude of sins. You will not always dwell on the sins of your wife, on the sins of your husband. Once you have been corrected, they have, you have talked about them. You move on and overcome that evil, overcome that weakness with love. Let our homes be a places where we demonstrate love, not only in church, but at home. Because love is the force that holds everything together. And in this home, for things to work well, my dear friend, you remember our passage began in Psalms 128 with the happy is the man who loves the Lord, who walks in godly fear. Don't forget that. So that means in this home, you must put God in his right place. Yeah? Because the word of the Lord in Psalms 127 says, unless the Lord builds the house, they labor in vain that build it. Unless the Lord watches, uh, uh, unless the Lord guards the city, the watchmen stay awake in vain. So let us put God in his right place in our homes. The secret to a healthy home is a personal commitment to Christ. The secret to a happy home is a personal commitment to Christ. This verse is not saying you do not build your home. You do. Rather, it is a warning against uh, the idea of trying to build your home alone. Have a relationship with God. Reverence God in your heart. Reverend God in your home. Give God a place in your home. I encourage you to scrutinize your family values. Anything other than Jesus in that home, anything other than Jesus in his right place in your home is too weak for permanent cohesion. Listen to this friend. A personal commitment to Christ back to the positive examples and living according to biblical principle should be the family's goal. That should be the family's goal. I encourage you, my dear listener, have a personal relationship with Christ. 
Have you known Jesus as your Lord and Savior? Maybe you got married before you gave your life to Christ. Maybe you gave your life to Christ and later on gave up. You stopped going to church. You got annoyed with church leaders. You got annoyed with the way of life of church. But friend, I'm calling you back to church. I'm calling you back to Christ. I'm calling back to a personal relationship with God. Put God in the right place in your heart. Put God in the right place in the heart of your spouse. Put God in the right place in the your heart of your children. Put God in the right place in your home. I am a strong advocate. I am a, I'm, I'm, I'm a strong campaigner for family altar. And I insist and I continue to tell you, my dear friend, put God in the right place in that home. Gather your family before people go to bed, whether you eat or after eating, and read the word of God. Share thanksgiving of the day. Share prayer issues that arise. Celebrate God together. Thank God for food that he has provided, whatever the case may be. Commit some personal prayer items from the children to the adults in that home. Hey, my friend, and your life will never be the same again. I am here to encourage you. I am here to strengthen you. I am here to build you up and to make you know that you must put God in the right place in your home, my dear friend, and your life will never be the same again. You will appreciate the fact that you listened to me. You will appreciate the fact that you read the word of God together with me. As we bring it to an end, God says in this psalm, Behold, this shall be, uh, uh, behold, this shall be the man that I, who fears the Lord. That is what he says in Psalms 128. Psalms 128, very powerful scripture. I want to read this psalm to you in another translation called the Message Translation so that we hear how he brings this psalm out today in the name of the Lord before I terminate. All you who fear God, how blessed you are, how happily you walk in a smooth, straight road. You worked hard and deserve all you have got coming. Enjoy the blessing. Revel in the goodness. Your wife will bear children as a vine bears grapes. Your household lasts as a vineyard. The children around your table as fresh and promising as young olive shoots. Stand in awe of God's, oh yes, oh how he blesses the one who fears God. Enjoy the good life in Jerusalem every day of your life and enjoy your grandchildren. Peace to Israel. Friend, may the Lord bless your home. I want to pray for that nun saved husband in that home. My brother, you are not born again. Your wife and children would want you to become a Christian. I pray that you give your life to Christ and make him your Lord and Savior. My sister, you are not born again as a mother, as a wife. The Lord loves you and wants you to give your life to Jesus and make Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior. Friend, it is dangerous to go through this life without a relationship from God, without a relationship with God. And therefore, to have a good home, to have a good marriage, God must be part and parcel of your marriage. God must be part and parcel of your family. And for you to have God, you must have a relationship with him. That is why this psalm says that blessed is every man who walks, who fears the Lord, who walks in his way. As a husband, do you walk in the ways of the Lord? As a wife, as a mother, as a father, do you walk in the ways of the Lord? Children, yes, you take your, you enjoy your, your, your excitement in life as you enjoy your youth. Remember the Bible says rejoice in your youth. But it still tells you remember God will bring you to judgment. Therefore, give your life to the Lord. Enjoy one another. May your home be a beautiful home where God is put in his right place, where management is the order of the day, order is the order of the day. People create time for one another. May your home be that home where love is a lifestyle. You love one another and you're excited about it. May good parenting take place in your home. This is your host saying to you, God values marriage. God values the home. Uh, I reverence God in your home and your life will never be the same again. In conclusion, we say, blessed is everyone who fears the Lord, who walks in his ways. 
friend, walk in the ways of the Lord. The Lord richly bless you. Father, may you bless every listener and every viewer. Bless their marriage. Could there be a marriage here represented where there is pain and there's tears? I pray for the healing of God. Could there be a husband here that is having some challenge with his wife or children? May you turn tables around for this man. Could there be a mother here, a wife here, Lord, that is in pain? They, they've lost a pregnancy. They lost a child. Something went wrong. Father, may you heal this viewer. May you heal this listener, oh God. Could there be a child here who are, things have delayed for him or her, either to go to college or to get married or to go get a job? I pray, Lord, may you touch this son, may you touch this daughter. Whatever needs <coughs> that are represented, Lord, I lift every home before you. Bless our marriages and bless this home. In Jesus' precious name, we pray. The Lord richly bless you. We are here for you. Concluding by saying, God honors marriage, and God said that marriage should be honored by all. Value your home. Value your marriage. Value your life together as a family. Serve God and live for God. Thank you for listening. Introduce this program to your friends, your relatives, and your neighbors. If it blesses you, give us a feedback. We'll always be excited to receive your feedback. Till next time, this is your host, Bishop Felicia Deutsch, signing off from Deliverance Church, uh, Kawash Living Stream Center, Kisumu City, along Kondele Kibos Road, behind Gurika Estate, and your life will never be the same again. The Lord richly bless you. Amen. <laughs>